let's just begin in standing on the mat and feet shoulder width apart. Just relax the whole body. Imagine that you're the crown of your head is pulled up towards the ceiling, knees soft, arms hanging. Just relax. Notice your breath. Notice its quality. See if you can bring awareness and intention into a low breath, fully using that diaphragmatic breathing down into the belly. Slow. See if the breath can be slow and soft and smooth. Just relaxing into your breath. And we'll begin our first Qigong movement, just lifting and lowering. So just slowly imagine your hands come up about shoulder height and then slowly fall. Almost as if you were in a swimming pool, lifting your arms. Just a slight resistance in the air. As you come down, you can soften your knees a little bit. If it's comfortable, you can soften your gaze. Just look at nothing. Just lifting and lowering with the breath, inhaling gently as you come up, exhaling as you lower. Now we'll add an out movement when we come down just out, elbows leading out, expanding, and then exhaling back, and then we'll lift, and then lower, and then out, and then back in. Just feeling that rhythm, once again, almost as if you're in a pool, just slight resistance. Softly and slowly, gently. We'll do one more. And then just hands back to your abdomen and then relax along your side. Now imagine ourselves with our arms extended out, fingertips up, just pushing out walls, reaching, reaching, pushing, and then contract everything as we come back in to protect ourselves from the walls that we've pushed out. And then let's push the walls out again, exhaling. Inhale back as we come to cover, and then exhale when we cover. Inhale up, exhale, push out, pushing, 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 reaching up, and out, and then cover. Do one more pushing out. And then covering, contracting everything, tucking tailbone. And then we'll relax. Your arms up, we'll just do a lung practice, palms down. As you open out, now palms up, index finger and thumb together. Now bring back towards your shoulders. And then push away, kind of a rotation, and then we'll repeat. Palms down, opening, and then palms up, connecting the lung, large intestine channel. Pull back to the shoulders, and then pushing away. Exchanging chi, 
gathering from the outside, bringing back, bringing back that intelligence and energy, and exchanging, pushing away, giving back to the universe, opening and closing, bring back to the shoulders, pushing away. You may notice a slight like rocking almost from forward to backward, from your toes to your heels. Inhale as you come back to your body. Exhale, push away. Inhale out. Exhale back. Inhale. Exhale, one, two, one more. Out. One more back in. This time as we bring it back to our body, we'll just release it down to our dantian. Turn a little bit sideways so you can see. We'll just begin a, a wave. And the full extension of the wave, we'll pretend like we're reaching. Maybe just getting ready to dive off the diving board. And then the fullest will be that we're pushing. So it's almost like you're... It's a big wave, pushing, almost like you're sledding or pulling on a cat track, if you guys have skied, reaching forward, pushing back. You can lead with your, lead with your hips all the way back, and then hips forward, chest open. Once again, if you could imagine you're in a swimming pool, almost just pushing that water, feeling that resistance, even though there's nothing there except air. You're swimming in chi. You just don't know it. We'll do one more. Chi forward, and then pulling back, and then coming to stillness. And we'll do a little bit of side movement, washing windows. So feet a little wider than shoulder width. Now imagine that there's a, a glass wall in front of you. And we're going to wash, wash low, starting on one side and streaking across, hands again against the glass. And then we're going to make a big arc once again, hands against the glass. Just coming in a big arc shape. And then pulling across, and then washing in a big arc on the top. See if you can wash as wide as you can, as big an arc as you can. You can imagine that the glass is sticky, and you have to really bear down on it. Pull that glass. Do one more in this direction. And then we'll switch. So now we'll wipe it in the other direction across. And then a big arc over the top. You can feel your hips give you some initiation. Knees, your body weight shifts from side to side. Shoulders open. Hands flat against the glass. We'll do one more. And then back to center. Now continuing the side movement. Just grab a ball, a big ball of chi. Imagine it's the size of a beach ball, because we've yet to compress it. Bring it up over your head, and then just take that chi ball, and just from side to side, 
And now imagery is just like kelp in the ocean, swaying back and forth, holding that sheep off. But as the waves come in, you react. As the waves go out, you react. You don't resist the waves. You're part of that ocean. It's like we're swimming in she. She's falling out. And we don't know it. Unless we bring attention and awareness to it. And when you get back to center, you can just slower, slowly lower that chi ball down. And tell that you've grabbed some chi. We'll carry mountains. So lift your arms up. Turn your palms up. And now just rotate to the side, looking at that backhand. And then come to center. And then to the other side, feeling that twist in the hips, the knees, the torso, whole body. You might notice your shoulders that they're holding up. See if you can relax your shoulders at the same time, using your shoulders to help you with that extension back. That paradox of keeping tension into the maximum extension range of movement that our body can make, but doing it while there's relaxation around that tension. It's a paradox. We'll do one more. Even out if you need to. And then back to center, slowly lower your arms. Now we'll <clears throat> just tap our kidneys, so just begin a gentle motion. And eventually we'll end up to where your hand is just gently tapping your lower back, or your kidney, your kidney area. And you can let your head come with it if it's comfortable. Use your hips to initiate it. You can almost use your hips to, like, throw your arms, if you will. You can notice the rotation all the way down into your feet. Those little bones in your feet are moving, transferring that stability and, and movement all the way up through your body, through the crown of your head. Just a rotating cylinder of energy. Now just slowly unwind, bring less energy into it, less movement, and slowly come to stillness. Find your center, and then take a moment, either close your eyes or softly gaze, and just notice the energy in your body, your breath, bring awareness back to your breath. Now we'll do washcloth, so bring your arms up, and just as a washcloth, you twist and rinse in opposite directions. Palm up, palm down. Just move, just like your shoulders were a big washcloth and we're using our hands, our palms, to initiate that, that twisting. So as one palm comes up, one palm comes down. If you'd like to, you could look to the side with the palm up. Just feel that gentle rotation. Notice the muscles that you use in your shoulder, bring awareness to your shoulder, how they're cooperating to, to allow that movement. And 
you may begin to feel some almost like, like energy in your arms as it moves down to your fingertips. If you want to, in mind activity, you can play with almost that movement from side to side, like an old video game, the Pong video game, where it's binging back and forth from fingertip to fingertip. And then slowly come to stillness, bring your arms to the side. We'll lift the sky. So palms down, fingertips together, and just bring your arms up in a big arc. And when you get to the top, push up like you're pushing up the ceiling. Then just slowly let your arms float down. And then we'll repeat. Arms up. And get to the top. Push up the ceiling. And then come down. Again, lifting up. And then down. Lifting the sky. And then releasing. One more. Lifting the sky. And then releasing. Now bring your feet maybe a little bit wider than shoulder width. <clears throat> we'll do blooming flowers. So just imagine that you're, you are a part of nature and we're working with nature. We're going to reach down and grab some water, scoop some water. And just as a flower, we're going to bring it up our stem, out to our leaves. And then as we release it, it's turning into rain. Wiggle your fingertips, and then we're going to scoop more water up our stems, up to the leaves, and let it rain. Scoop the water up the stems, let it rain. Scooping water up the stems to the leaves. As far as physical movement, when you come down, you can keep your knees somewhat straight. If you're, but then when you come up, you can do kind of a squat almost to bring that water up the stem, up the leaves, just as your body says it's okay. So kind of straight knees, and then lift that water. We'll do one more. And then just let it rain. Gentle, gentle, gentle rain. And bring your feet to either touching or almost touching. So, hands at prayer. And we'll just take our elbows to one side, our hips to the other side. And it's not a twist. So tailbone tuck, tailbone down. Just go really slow and feel your shoulders. Feel your hips as you go from side to side. Notice the areas of the shoulder, the hips and the knees that might be at fullest range of motion. And just notice just bring awareness to those. Maybe your lower back, maybe your shoulders. Just notice. Do one more on each side. And then back to center.
Now we'll do a golden exchange. So this is where all the chi that we've that we've gathered and organized, we're going to integrate. So palms down, lift up really slow. Now we're out to the side. And then let them just ever so gently exhale back. Now we'll lift up, inhaling. And then as we exhale, we'll bring our palms down and then to the side of our ribs, kidneys, back of the thighs, down. And then ground your hands, grounding that energy, and then up the inside of your legs, inside your knees, your thighs, on your midline. Prayer, and then we'll repeat that. Drop your hands on the side. So inhale. Exhale, float back. Inhale, gather. Universal G, bring it down. Integrate it to our back. Yang channels. Bring it into our yin channels. Up. Into prayer. Release down on our side. Again, up. And then let it down. Up. Down. On our sides. Yang channels. In channels. One more time. Inhale. Gently float back. Grounding. Up. Down. To our young side and touching the earth. Up to the end. Thing. Let's move into some yoga, what we think of as maybe yoga. And I base this flow kind of off Sun Salute L, so there'll be components of that Sun Salute L. So let's begin at the top of our mat and standing. Reach your arms up in an upward salute. And now reach up as wiggle side to side if you need to, but just try to get your fingers to touch the ceiling. And then release down into a forward fold. Little change, half lift. And then just notice the back of your calves, the back of your hamstrings. Plant your hands, step your right foot back, your right knee down. And we'll come into crescent, low crescent. Put your hands on your knee and then tuck your tailbone. And we'll, on that right uh, hip flexor, Notice some tension in that. You may notice down uh, towards your knee, the front of your thigh, some tension. And then bring your hands back to the mat and slowly rock back and stretch the left hamstring, the left back part of your thigh. Just being gentle, being gentle. And then rock forward, hands framing your left foot, bring your right foot back forward. Interlace your hands behind your back. And then open your chest as you come to a half lift. Opening, using this to open your chest. And then soften your knees, fold forward. Those interlaced hands, just letting them relax down. Now release your hands, we'll come up into chair pose. And then we'll modify chair pose by tucking our tailbone, taking our, our, our arms, thumbs down, and tucking our tailbone and just making a big C shape. So imagine from the crown of your head all the way through your back and your pelvis a big C shape. Now come back into your chair pose, which is probably tailbone up. And then one more time, turn your hands, palms down, rotate, come into a big C shape, tailbone tucked. Then inhale, rise. Once again, extend as high as you can, reaching the ceiling. And now with your gaze fixed on a point, come up on your toes. 
and then release down, release down. Your whole body will come into forward fold. Come into half lift. Plant your hands, step your left foot back, left knee down. And bring your hands to that right knee. Tuck your tailbone and notice the, the tension in that left hip flexor. And then bring your hands back to the mat. Rock back. Notice the tension in your right hamstring. And then forward, hands framing that right foot. Bring your left foot back forward. Interlace your hands. Now half lift, really opening your chest. Shoulder blades together. Now soften your knees, fold forward. Now release your hands, come into chair pose. Now we'll do that alternate chair pose, thumbs down, make a big C shape with your body from the crown of your head through your tailbone. Now back to chair pose. Now thumbs down, C shape. Inhale, rise. Reach to the ceiling. Bring your tips high. Fix your gaze. Come up on your toes. And then slowly release your arms down to your sides. Come into your mountain pose, lifting from the crown of the head. Just soften. Notice your breath. Notice its quality. Notice where the breath is going. Is it low? Can you make it soft? Can it be smooth? Now we'll do just a flow that includes some standing asanas now. But as we do these asanas, I mentioned before, where you do that range of motion, but you do it in relaxation. See if you can bring that extension or range of motion with, with relaxation to your body. See if it's available. But to get into crescent, let's do kind of a balance. So bring your arms up in an upward salute. Ground your weight into your left foot. And as you let your arms fall forward, release your right leg to come backward into a crescent. Just see as a challenge just how soft that toe can come down, that right toe. Then into a crescent. And once again, tucking the tailbone and noticing that tension on the right hip flexor with your tailbone tucked. And then release your hands to your hips. Reset your back foot for a warrior two stance. Once again, noticing that tucked tailbone on that right hip flexor. And then as you bring your arms up to a T, bring your arms up to where they're the same angle as your pelvis is, the same the same line as the pelvis, and that won't be lined up with your mat. But now bring your gaze forward to the to the mat, to the front of the mat, which would be over your knee. And now just slowly twist your upper torso to where your arms are aligned with the mat. And just notice your body relaxing at the same time, extending. 
Now, for extended side angle, drop the outside of that left forearm, right arm to the sacrum. And if it's comfortable, you can look up. Noticing your body, what parts are relaxed, what parts have tension. Slowly bring your arm, your right arm up, palm face, facing forward. And if it's comfortable, you can take that arm forward and up, and thumb up. Now we'll release and come into reverse warrior. Just like we practiced in mountain pose, reaching to the ceiling. Once again, reach just as high as you can. Noticing that stretch along the left side body. And now we're going to revolve. In other words, switch arms with this. So right arm comes up, left arm back, down for a twist, thumbs up. You can gaze back to your left, your left hand if it's comfortable and available. And then bring your arms up, warrior one. And then reset your back foot, come into crescent. And then we'll reverse, trying to get that same balance, that same. So tip your weight forward, weight forward. And then bring that right foot back to mountain. Releasing your hands along your side. And just take a moment to either shake if that feels good, just to move some of that energy around, or just relax and notice your breath. Just paying attention to, to how your body feels. Now do the other side. From mountain pose, bring your arms up into an upward salute. And then slowly bring the weight to your right foot. And as you reach forward with your arms, release your left foot to come back as gently toe touching and come into crescent. Tuck your tailbone, notice the tension. In the front side of your left hip. Now release your hands to your hips. Reset your left foot to set up for warrior two. We'll come into that similar. So tailbone tucked. You still feel that tension in front of your, your left hip flexors. And bring your arms out, but do it with alignment to your, to your pelvis. Now bring your gaze to the front of the mat, which towards your front knee. Now just gently rotate your upper, your upper body. So you do come into warrior two, hands aligned with your front knee. Now we'll slowly drop into extended side angle. So the left, or excuse me, the right arm, Outside forearm comes to your right knee, left hand back to your sacrum. Look up if it's comfortable. And then when you're ready, left arm up, palm forward. You can bring it over your head or in a straight line of energy from your back foot through your fingers. And then we'll reverse warrior. So right arm high, lifting, lifting, just like we did before, extending to the sky. And now we'll revolve that. So right arm back, left arm up, Thumbs up, looking to the right, 
if it's available. Then arms up in a warrior one. Reset your back foot for crescent. Now slowly bring your weight forward, your weight onto your right foot. See if we can bring that left foot back to a nice soft landing. Now just once again, shake to release or just quietly notice your breath. Come back to your breath. Come back to the quality of low, slow, soft, and smooth. Get a drink if you need to. <laughs> so let's make our way to our mats. First into the tabletop as we transition to the mat. If cat and cow feels good, grab a couple. Just open up that spine. And then make your way to your belly. We'll set up our sphinx. Sphinx pose, palms down. Elbows below the shoulders. And then just relax. The extension in this is just letting your back soften, relax. At the same time, noticing what areas are tight, what areas have tension. And try to bring some awareness and relaxation, some release. Send some chi there. Now next we'll do inchworm, but we'll get there the opposite way we normally do. Normally we say drop knees, chin and chest. Let's bring our the palms of our hands along our sides. So now our chin and chest are down, but tuck your toes if they're not already, and just lift your hips, keeping your chest, keeping your chest and your chin down, and then just slowly work your way back. As long as it's comfortable, as long as your chest and your chin are still touching the mat, just gently move your hands and your body back, raising your hips as you do it. Once again, just noting, noticing that tension and bringing maybe some softness to that tension. But you can work your way back and then slowly release that. Arms along your sides or in crocodile, whatever is comfortable. And then when you're ready, Rock back to your to your knees. We'll set up for rabbit. So in rabbit, we'll tuck our toes, take our hands back. You may need to touch your forehead or your the top of your head to the mat. But once we begin to tuck and roll ourselves into rabbit, try not to have your forehead hitting the mat. We don't want to bring any tension to that area for headaches, but but feel yourself just curl up into a little ball and notice as you alternate that push into your arms and your shoulders and then your shoulders resist back and you come into that ball. Just notice an interplay of the parts of your body that are resisting either relaxing or 
not softening. And just bring awareness to that. And then release. Come back into tabletop. And if it feels good, just a couple cat and cows. If not, just notice your breath. Maybe notice any emotions or, or feelings you have. That, that asana can generate some, some feelings. For years I had much, much resistance to doing it. So, and then we'll bring our knees into 90 degrees, our legs into 90 degrees. So from your seat, one thigh straight out in front, aligned with the mat. Lower calf at 90 degrees, the other hip at 90 degrees. And then using your, your hand to completely flex your foot and then extending your tailbone back. So in other words, arch in your back. Slowly, ever so slowly, come down. Noticing the sensations in your hip, in your back, in your side, as you come down. Tailbone up with an arch in your back as you come down. If it's available and you're strong enough, you can lower without your arm as a support. And it may be that and then when you're down, you can come back up, and we'll repeat that a couple of times. Just softening as you come down, tailbone back, back arching, noticing what area of the hip is tight. And then back up, and then we'll twist to the back, back leg, back foot. And then we'll switch to the other side to do that. Just lift your knees and we'll transition over into the other side. Once again, the thigh in front of your hips, calf out at 90 degrees, other leg at 90 degrees. Front ankle fully dorsiflexed, and then tailbone back, arch in the back. Slowly let yourself come forward. Noticing your hip, noticing your back, and maybe noticing down your leg. What areas are tight? If pigeon is usually a quote unquote easy asana for you, then You can see if there's the strength component, that is, just using your body without hands for support to see if you can come down. And then as you come up, once again, tailbone back, arching your back. And pigeon, as it was designed, is a back bend. I saw on a post one day, somebody said, well, how many pigeons fold forward to sleep? Pigeons are usually puff-chested, that's why the Yasana <laughs> was probably named pigeon. So after the 290 degrees, we'll make our way into staff pose. Legs long in front, maybe and shoulder width apart in this staff pose or variation of it. And then hands along your side. We'll do reverse tabletop. And once again, rather than use momentum, let's just go slow and imagine that our tailbone, our tailbone's tucked, but imagine that our tailbone is the thing that is being lifted. So as we come into reverse tabletop, imagine that that tailbone is the one leading the way, going really slow, pulling it to the ceiling. 
and then letting that tailbone come down really slow. And then reset. If your shoulders need more opening, you can slide your hands slightly backward. And then once again, tailbone leading, coming up. And rather than use momentum to do it quickly, we use all the muscles that assist. And it feel, may feel much different than it does if you've done those in a very, in a quick manner. Because those big muscles that move can't be recruited quite so, so quickly. We'll do one more. And then release back to the mat. And then slowly make your way back to the mat, just lying on the mat. We'll do a single leg twist. So first bring your left leg long, bring your right knee into your body. Pull that knee towards your chest, your sternum. Really giving it a nice tight squeeze. And then towards your armpit. Giving it a nice tight squeeze. And then letting that leg fall over to the side. Arms to a T or cactus, looking the opposite direction that you've let that hip fall. And then just releasing. And then as we come back and we unwind, bring that same leg that we've let fall over. Let it come over and we'll do a lying tree pose. So bring that leg to let that hip fall open. You can bring it, the sole of the foot to your thigh or not. The point is just to be in kind of a half cobbler position. Just, just relaxing, softening, melting into the mat, setting up and getting ready for Shavasana. Now let that leg go back long. We'll bring the other, other knee into our body into our chest, first into our sternum, our chest bone, and then towards our armpit. And then letting that leg, that knee, fall and twist over the body. Gaze to the opposite side and just relax. <clears throat> Come back to center and then over center. Let that leg and thigh open to a half cobbler lying tree pose. 
once again, just melting, relaxing, bringing awareness back to your breath. Is it low? And it's slower since we reduced our activity level. But is it soft? Is it smooth? Now release that leg long. Ankles wide. If you need anything for Shavasana, grab pillows, blankets, anything you need for Shavasana. If in between you need to arch and flatten, go ahead and do that. But just get ready to sink and melt into Shavasana. Once again, noticing your breath. Is it low? Is it slow? Is it soft and smooth? As you release your body into the mat, let it melt. Just notice areas of tension areas of comfort and ease with no judgment just notice I'll be quiet for a few moments and I'll bring you back just use this time to integrate slowly bring awareness back to your breath 
Notice its movement in and out. Inhaling and exhaling. Now invite movement back to your to your body. And as we get ready to come into seated position, you can slowly bring the soles of your feet to the mat, raising your knees, maybe your arms overhead. Then as you roll to your side, using that arm and elbow as a pillow, as you transition back to a seat. For a pranayama, Let's do bee buzz. So, to do that, find a comfortable seat. We'll block our senses out using our thumbs to push in on that little fleshy part before the ear, our fingers to close our eyes, our other fingers, awareness around our mouth. We'll inhale and then just buzz, buzz like a bee. And notice that that sound can come through your body. It resonates not only your throat or your nose in our normal vocal areas, but it can resonate throughout your body. And then notice that that sound also can, can continue, even though you are inhaling and exhaling, that sound can continue. So, Let's just be buzz for a couple of minutes and just notice and feel. If you've finished, just once again, feel that resonance throughout your body. Many ancient traditions used sound, healing sounds, to communicate with the body. And so, in respect for those traditions, we continue to practice for their effectiveness and their wisdom. So for just the next couple of minutes, let's just spend that time seeing if we can scan our body while breathing softly and notice that sound to see if that sound can move around our body, expanding it from our throat, from our, from our head where we felt it, into our chest, into our organs, and out to our limbs. When we did washcloth today, we played with energy from fingertip to fingertip, bouncing it around. Sound is a form of energy, and we can play with moving that energy around. And then when you're ready, 
We'll transition back to standing and finish our practice with a couple of Qigong movements just to close out our practice. The first is that golden exchange, that movement of qi energy around our bodies. So begin just in standing position, arms at your sides, lifting from above. Slowly lift your arms on an inhale and let them float just a little bit. And then palms up, reaching up, and then bringing the energy down, and then back along our back, back of our legs and calves, and then grounding that energy in that, up the inside, our yin channels, up to our chest. Prayer for a minute, release that down, back to our sides. Inhale, exhale, release. Inhale, exhale as we fold forward, our yang, gathering some earth, yin energy, up our yin channels, bringing that to prayer, releasing our prayer to the universe. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. All the way down our young. And then back up again to prayer and then just release at our sides and then just stand for a moment. Notice the energy exchange that we did. And now Qigong practices in with some acupressure massage, so slowly rub your hands together, gather some chi, and then beginning with your forehead, just releasing, giving your forehead, starting right above the center point between your eyes, and then out to your temples, and then around your eyes, Around that eye socket. And then along the ridge of your nose, and kind of along the side of your mouth. And then around your head, paying special attention to one finger on the inside of the ear and the other behind the ear as you come around for that face massage. And then up over the crown of your head, just fingers like a comb, really pressing, and then back on the shoulders, and up using a stiff comb of your fingertips, and on the back of your shoulders, and over. And using your fingertips just to lightly tap the base of the skull those muscles below that and above the base of the skull, just lightly tapping, drumming. And now, massage your ears, rub your ears from the tops, the ear tips down to the lobes. And then pull on the lobes. And then release your hands at your sides. And then from deep inside, say something positive to yourself. You are healthy and your chi is bright. Thank you for practicing with me.